Mammography is one of the best screening tools to find breast cancer. Breast cancer may not be preventable, but you can survive it through early detection. If you're a mother or grandmother, sister or best friend, aunt or cousin, we encourage you to know your risk, make healthy lifestyle choices, and to know what's normal for your body. Get screened, get your mammogram annually. We, we did! did. Parliamentary Secretary Renwood Wells takes a back seat. FNM Senator Carl Bethel defends his party leader. The DNA leader is accused of flip-flopping on VAP. Plus, Atlantis guests plunged into darkness. Those stories and a whole lot more coming up. I'm Bonnie Tood and Envy 12 starts now. Topping news tonight, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Works Philip Davis asserted today there should be consequences for Parliamentary Secretary Renwood Wells, whom he says has taken a back seat at the Ministry of Works. Though Wells is still Parliamentary Secretary, Davis suggested that could soon change. He told reporters he is waiting for Prime Minister Perry Christie to act. I think Mr. Wells has taken the view that he's going to wait to see, and he's, he's, he's in discussions now, I'm told, with the Prime Minister, but he's not actively, he's taken a backseat, as it were, as Parliamentary Secretary of the Ministry. He hasn't resigned or been fired since the letter of intent controversy arose more than two months ago. However, Renward Wells is no longer performing certain duties, according to Works Minister Philip Davis. He says Wells reports to the Ministry of Works and remains the parliamentary secretary, but he feels there should be consequences for the Bamboo Town MP. There should be some consequence, and that consequence is in the is is about my pay grade at the moment. And is he still reporting to work at your office? The Ministry of Works. Uh, he comes in Monday to Friday, nine to five. He comes to the office is every day. He comes to the office. Is he still the parliamentary secretary? He's still the parliamentary secretary, yes. For the Ministry of Work? For the Ministry of Work, yes. But well, that could change. It could change, yes. When pressed by NB12 on how soon Weld's position as parliamentary secretary could change, Davis said, I'm waiting for the Prime Minister to act. To act. Prime Minister Perry Christie asked Wells to resign in July after he signed the LOI with Stellar Waste to Energy for a $600 million plus plant without cabinet approval. We asked Davis if Christie looks weak because he hasn't fired Wells. He paused before answering. Uh, weak? No, why, why would that make him look weak? If, if, on the, well, if, if, the, if the premise is correct, if the premise is correct, that he's asked Mr. Wells to resign, and Mr. Wells has not resigned. If that premise is correct, how does that make him appear to be weak? I don't think so. I say let's wait and see. He has indicated he's not going to march to anyone else's drum. Not the press, not uh, the opposition, but he will march to his own drum. Let's hear when he makes his drum roll. Christie also asked Wells to speak to the nation regarding the LOI before the House of Assembly took its break and not let others seek to denigrate them. However, the House adjourned on Tuesday without a peep from Wells. Though Christie has been heavily criticized for allowing the matter to linger for months, Davis insisted it's all a matter of timing. We all have our style of how we deal with matters. And, 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 and I don't and I don't and I do not criticize persons for who they are, what they are. I, what I do know is that the Prime Minister will act and he will, as he said before, he's not gonna march to anybody else's drum. Davis spoke with reporters on the sidelines of a high level ministerial forum on Caribbean water security.
FNM Senator Carl Bethel is defending party leader Dr. Hubert Minnis' decision to hold an emergency executive meeting Tuesday night. Deputy Leader Loretta Butler-Turner has accused Minnis of playing a dangerous and transparent game. However, Bethel says Minnis did nothing wrong. Dana Smith reports. Senator Carl Bethel said a convention was called in order to resolve the public perception of a leadership struggle within the FNM that some party members thought was weakening to the party. And as for yesterday's leaked letter in which Deputy Leader Loretta Butler-Turner accused party leader Hubert Minnis of playing a dangerous game, Bethel said it's unfortunate such information is being leaked to the press. I understand that a letter was leaked. I don't know who wrote the letter. Uh, I don't know whether it really came from the deputy leader per se in the sense that I don't know who leaked that document. Um, it's a part of an unfortunate trend where, of late where a lot of internal party matters may or may not be leaked to the press for someone to gain something. I don't know what. Menace called an emergency meeting on Tuesday to discuss the party's convention. Butler Turner was in Long Island at the time. She said in a leaked email she was taken aback and shocked to learn of the meeting because Menace knew she was visiting her constituency. She said in her email, This is a very dangerous game you are playing and anybody can see clear through it. There are so many things wrong with this. Well, Bethel said the leader has a right to call a meeting whenever he deems it necessary. It is peculiarly the leaders committee it is it is for the lead it, co it only meets at his discretion when he decides that he uh, wishes to have the policy input from the party the executive is the leaders committee not the leaderships committee the the individual leaders committee the leaked letter has added fuel to persistent reports of a rift between the FNM leader and his deputy. However, Bethel insisted there is no division within the party. He added one of the reasons Minnis decided to call for a convention was to lay to rest the perception of a leadership struggle. The executive had a firm and overwhelming consensus that the public nature of what might appear to be a leadership contest was weakening to the party and that it was in the best interest of the free national movement for um, there to be a convention forthwith in order to resolve that issue which, which unfortunately because of certain public disclosures or public actions might have created the unfortunate impression of disunity in the party. There is no disunity in the FNM when it comes to our task of defeating the progressive liberal party. The November 21st convention still needs to be approved by the party's council, which is set to meet tonight. After that, convention details are expected to be confirmed. We asked Bethel if he plans to offer himself for a party post. However, he refused to answer, only stating he has nothing to announce as of today, and he is focused on his current job as a lawyer and senator. Reporting for NB12, I'm Dana Smith. Democratic National Alliance leader Bramwell McCartney is standing by comments he made more than two years ago on value-added tax. A video showing McCartney calling for that has been widely circulated online. However, he claims his words were taken out of context. Jasmine Brown reports. Today, McCartney insisted that what he said at that 2012 rally just before the general election was no mistake, insisting that a new tax regime is needed, but implementing that now is not the answer. The video that was posted on Tuesday shows McCartney insisting the Bahamas will have to look at implementing a new tax regime. The 22nd clip that labeled him a flip-flopper gained more than 300 views on YouTube. Are you a flip-flopper and do you think your words were taken out of context, the, the clip that's on the internet? Absolutely. I, the words were taken out of context. I said, if you listen to the words, I said that we may have to consider. And um, um, being a flip-flopper, no. Um, that must be attributed to our present leader of this country and other persons. <laughs> not Bradville McCartney. During the interview today, we showed McCartney the video that he says he had only heard about but never seen. 
McCartney says those comments were made at an economic rally in Grand Bahama shortly before the 2012 elections. Speaking bluntly, McCartney had this response to the video and those who posted it. There's no doubt that our tax regime to date is antiquated. Um, however, we cannot consider any new tax regime in the state that we are now. This government has not done anything to provide good governance and as a result we still have wastage, we still have uh, mismanagement of the ministries and departments that cost us money every day. We are not in a position to collect our taxes today. That was initially intended to be implemented last July, but was pushed back to January 1, 2015. Prime Minister Perry Christie had previously said it would be introduced at 15 percent. The new VAT rate is now 7.5 percent. As the government pushed to finalize its VAT plan, McCartney repeatedly bashed the Christie administration for implementing it. In February of this year, he called for the government to rethink the introduction of value-added tax, calling it, quote, an unfair, untimely, and unreasonable burden to place on the backs of Bahamians. When asked if he was against VAT during a press conference in August, he said, quote, absolutely. He added that the DNA is going to oppose VAT left, right, and center. Today, McCartney said he believes there needs to be a new system of taxation. He added that the DNA is not completely opposed to VAT, but says now is not the time for its implementation. In order to introduce any new regime, whether it's VAT or otherwise, um, and I've said this before, and I've not knocked VAT, I said we are not prepared for VAT. We should not have VAT at this time, simply because we have no new industry, our economy is not growing, and certainly there are no new manufacturing in this country to date. Mm -hmm. VAT can do well if we have those things in place. Reporting for NV12, I'm Jasmine Brown. Bahamas Christian Council President Reverend Ranford Patterson says the church is divided on the fourth constitutional amendment bill, and he does not think religious leaders will ever be on the same page regarding that issue. Kyle Joaquin reports. One. President of the Bahamas Christian Council, Reverend Dr. Ranford Patterson, says when it comes to Constitutional Amendment Bill Number 4, there are some pastors that are completely against it. But on the other hand, he said there are some that are behind it 100 percent. And he said, quite frankly, he's not sure if they will ever be on the same page. Patterson says although they all believe men and women are equal, when it comes to Constitutional Amendment Bill Number 4, which seeks to end discrimination based on sex, there is still division among church leaders. In fact, he doesn't know what it will take to get them all to see eye to eye on the issue. I think the, the church is still divided on that issue, um, but you know, I believe we are all in agreement that men and women are equal. The, the challenge, like I said, is, is to get everybody on board on that fourth question. That seemed to be a challenge that I don't know um, what it's going to take to change it. I, I have no idea. The referendum on gender equality, which was set for November 6th, has already been delayed to some time next year. Just this past Monday, government also delayed the vote in Parliament on the referendum because they did not have the full support of the opposition, which some within the Free National Movement call a cop-out. Well, today, Patterson said he doesn't know if the delay really makes any difference. Persons will vote based on their conscience, what they feel. And I don't know if delaying it to next year was going to make a difference. I think the government should have just go ahead and present the questions and let the Bahamian people make their decision. Patterson says in terms of campaigning for or against the amendments, the Christian Council will not take part, and it has nothing to do with the government ignoring the results of the gaming referendum. Now, when asked if there is a possibility the church could join forces with the government with regards to the referendum, particularly question four, Patterson says he doubts it. I don't know if you'll ever get all of us on board with question four, um, because people have varying views about that question. Um, and maybe more information might help, I don't know. Um, like I said, there are some denominations who are ready to support. Um, there are some who are saying, you know, we, we are not comfortable. So, you know, I don't know what it's going to take to get everybody on, bo on board. So we just have to do, have to do what you have to do and see what the end result is going to be. There are some within the governing party like Marco City MP Greg Moss and Fort Charlotte MP Dr. Andrew Rollins who oppose question four because they believe the wording may open the door to gay marriage. 
Patterson says there are a few more meetings scheduled for church leaders to discuss the topic. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin.